Brian Mudd Show is on News Radio 610 WIOD. Uh, now, taking a look at some of the latest with the virus. You know, people have been wondering, hey, if I have in, in a, a lot of the conversation around these antibody tests, well, maybe if I had antibodies, I'm going to be immune from getting uh, COVID-19 and therefore I could go about and live my life. Is that necessarily the case? WHO recently warned that's not necessarily the case. Dr. James Pickney, the second, is joining us now to talk about this. Dr. Pickney, uh, it, does this make sense to you that if somebody's had the virus, they would not necessarily be immune from whatever's out there right now? You know, typically with uh, infectious disease, virology studies, when someone de- develops antibodies to the virus, then they're immune to that virus moving forward. Now, the virus can mutate. So in the, the flu, influenza, um, every season it's a little bit different. So that's why you can get the virus each season. What we don't know is how COVID-19 reacts to uh, reinfection, and and that's the really scary part about the virus. We've seen cases uh, in other countries where people have been infected, had the antibodies, and then they turn out being positive again, and that's the real mystery here. So um, only time will tell and more research uh, to to determine exactly if uh, immunity can be the body can create an immune response that will prevent further infection with the same virus strand. Is it fair to say that with viruses in general, if you do end up recovering from something and there isn't a mutation, it's the same kind of strain that's out there, you generally would be immune from it? That's exactly right. So typically with um, something called herd immunity, the community has to have 90% of the community needs to have the antibodies to a particular virus to protect the entire community. So that's why we do vaccinations uh, across the world. Uh, We're trying to develop a vaccination for the COVID-19, but the problem is determining if those antibodies are actually going to be effective in preventing transmission of the disease. And Dr. Pickney, you had mentioned, you know, the possibility for mutation. Remember, the early WHO information in late February showed that there had been very little mutation. I believe it was like 0.1% mutation from when it was first discovered, theoretically, uh, December 31st to the end of February. But we had that recent study that uh, seemingly had the, the state folks in China made go away that implied that there could be up to 30 different strains of COVID-19 out there. Is that something that you believe to be plausible? Yes, I actually read the the study itself. And uh, about a month ago, uh, I read a study where there were eight strains, uh, identified strains of COVID-19. Now there's 30 strains. Now, the good news is most of those uh, mutations that have been genetically coded are not uh, drastic enough to um, to to, to basically create a different, completely different strain. Uh, so that's the good news. So yes, there's a lot of variation with COVID-19, but we haven't had that drastic mutation to where uh, you know for a fact immunity to one strain is not going to transmit to another strain. But if if it did, that might have the potential to explain why uh, we have so many variances based upon you know certain circumstances, some people that might even be asymptomatic. Could that ultimately be something that turns out to be a different strain of the virus? I, I highly doubt it because typically from the, the studies that I've read and the case studies, you're talking about the same family, right? The, the, the same group of people. Some are asymptomatic, some are symptomatic. So they were probably infected with the same strain. Now, if you're talking about different states and different countries, then yes, absolutely. Um, certain strains could be more virulent than others and, and be more symptomatic. Uh, but in the United States, uh, I'm thinking that people just respond differently to the virus. For instance, um, I've got an old, uh, my own story of personal loss. Uh, a, a college roommate who uh, was a physician in Detroit died of COVID-19, mm-hmm. and he was a swimmer in high school, had incredible lung capacity, and was no pre-existing conditions and was in great health and left behind uh, three children under five and his wife. So a tragic story, and, and you just don't know who's going to react how to the virus. So it's very important to continue social distancing. I know a lot of states are, are reopening, and including the state that I'm located in, and Texas is trying to reopen uh, this week. I highly advise governors to not reopen. It's okay to have a plan uh, and have a phased approach, but we have to be very systematic about reopening our country. And I understand the economy is hurting, uh, but 
health is the most important thing and people are dying and i feel like a lot of uh individuals in america that aren't necessarily entrenched uh, like healthcare providers are and i talk to er doctors all across the country and the world uh, and nurses it's bad seattle detroit chicago uh, new york boston new jersey um the southern states haven't been hit as hard but this is no joke this is a serious virus uh, and, and we don't know enough about it to completely reopen our economy and our country. We, we need more time, more research, and we have got to do our due diligence or we will be in the exact same situation in three months. Thank you for your expertise and times. Dr. Uh, James Pickney II to be right back on the Brian Mudd Show, News Radio 610 WIOD.